time has come where we are reaching the end of a cycle and the intelligent, civilized, advanced, thoughtful, caring, knowledgeable, compassionate human being is facing a future. A door is being opened for them to an infinite reality out there. And we have got to be prepared to go through that door. And we're not ready yet. NASA decided just a few years, short years ago from estimates, estimates, mind you, that there are 400 billion stars in our galaxy alone. Now, you know what our galaxy is like, that big spinning wheel, looks like a lot the Andromeda galaxy. Beyond that, they said that they roughly have an estimate that there are 400 billion galaxies in the known universe. And I like to say, share with you that the only people I know who can deal with those kind of numbers are the guys that deal with our national debt, the budgetary people back in Washington. But beyond those two figures of 400 billion stars and 400 billion galaxies, they have said, at the modest minimum, we estimate that there are probably 100 million planets with intelligent life out there. And now, think about it for a moment. When, the, when I have my slideshow, and I, there won't be time here today, maybe some other time to, while this conference is on, I have photographs that are literally stunning, mind-boggling photographs taken through the great telescopes of those galaxies and those stars. Hundred million planets with intelligent life. How many of those are well beyond us? Can you imagine what a planet with intelligence that's a thousand, a hundred thousand, a million years ahead of us in science? They'd, we would think of them as gods, would we not? If they come here and show themselves and interrelate with us, our ancestors did. They called them gods. And those guys out there aren't really wanting that. They don't want us to look upon them as gods. They want us to look upon them as fellow citizens in a vast, vast community of life. Now, we're going to have to be prepared to go through that door that's being opened for us. And what I'd like to point out to you is that we're going to go through that door together. One people from one planet with one future, or we're not going to go through that door at all. We are all the same. It doesn't depend what color we are. It doesn't make any difference what church we go to. It doesn't depend in any way on what language we speak. Every human being on this planet is an immortal life form, and we're going to have to reach that understanding. The garbage and the savagery in Yugoslavia of the ethnic cleansing has got to stop. The famines have got to stop. There's enough food on this planet to feed everybody. We have got to reorder our lives so that we can take our place and go through that door and become members of that infinite, vast community of intelligent life. Now, that's my personal view. I would like to close by quoting a view from one of my great, great teachers, one of the people I admired the most as a great writer, <clears throat> Count Leo, Leo Tolstoy, some years back. He repeatedly made clear, this is one of his basic beliefs, that there is something in the human spirit that will survive and prevail, that there is a light that will not go out no matter how dark the world becomes. I believe that to be so. I know that to be the case. I'm glad to share that statement from Leo Tolstoy with you and tell you that that is my view as well. And I have a nagging suspicion that it's the same view of everybody in this room. <clears throat>